Pope Trout Wine now 19 and one on the year inside the circle. Tough outing for Danielle Williams. Seven hits and six runs given up in just three innings pitch. But there's no doubt we will see the NU ace again later on in the WCWS. Here is head coach Kate Johan postgame in Oklahoma City with Emily Eamon. Coach, despite the loss, your team had a big push at the end to get that extra run in. What does that do for the confidence of this team? Well, I think just you, we got to stay tough. You know, you got to keep playing the game. And I think our team has shown all year that if we have an at-bat, we have a chance. Danielle Williams, you pulled her after that third inning. What decisions went into the fact of not putting her back in? Well, we wanted to just keep mixing it up. We wanted to give her a break, especially after that long inning. Um, LD came in and battled, and Sid came in and battled. What did you tell the pair of them before they entered that game? Well, all of our pitchers know to be ready, you know, and all of them are just hunting for those opportunities. Um, and I think they were ready, and they'll be ready for the next time. Rachel hit that homer in the second inning to put Oklahoma down for the first time in the postseason. What did that do for the confidence of this team? Well, it was a heck of an at-bat. You know, she spoiled some pitches and, and, and really did a nice job with that pitch. And I, I think she's been our leader all year offensively. She's got a great approach, uh, great confidence, and, um, you know, we need to continue to build on that for sure. You mentioned yesterday that every single game in the Women's College World Series is going to be tough. What made this game really tough? Well, I think they're good. I think they're very deep offensively. And, um, you know, we're playing in their home state, so they're going to have a few crowd, a few fans in the crowd too. But um, I think we can be better. I, I think that this was not our best game for sure, and we're just hunting for ways to get better. What's the number one way that you're looking for this team to get better? I don't want to give up any free bases. You know, I, we're really challenging our team to, um, to spin it through the zone and really attack and for our defense to step up and really make every team we play earn everything they get. You mentioned playing in a hostile environment. I know you prepped this team to play in these environments. How did you prep them? We just went out and played a really competitive non-conference schedule, um, played as many different style of teams that we could find in a lot of different parts of the country. Um, and each time we did, our, our team stepped up to the occasion, and I think they will again tomorrow. Seeing all those Northwestern fans and alums in the stadium today, what was your reaction to seeing them? It's, it's what it's all about. It's, it's everything to us. You know, we're really serious about winning ball games, but even more important than that, we want to prepare our young women for life. And when we see generations of women coming back and giving to, giving to our team now and staying so connected, that's very meaningful. You've said before you've been so impressed with the toughness and resilience of this team. Moving forward, what, how confident are you that they can bounce back quickly? I, I think that they'll bounce back in battle, and I think our team knows how to do it, and I think they're willing to put the work in. Coach, thank you so much. Thanks. Go Cats. Big Ten regular season champion Maryland set to host a regional for the first time ever this weekend. Terps will start things off against LIU on Friday night. Wake Forest and UConn also in this region. Maryland a big-time favorite, though, as the 15 seed should they advance to the Super Regionals. They will have to face off in all likelihood against number two overall seed, Stanford. And of course, your Big Ten tournament champion, the Michigan Wolverines, earning the automatic bid thanks to their performance this past week in Omaha. Wolverines will open up on Friday night against Oregon, making their fifth NCAA tournament appearance since 2015. Southeast Missouri State and Louisville also in this region to be hosted by the Cardinals. And for more on NCAA Regional Weekend, we welcome in Big Ten Network baseball analyst Jeff Lisey to the show. Hey, Jeff, we'll get to regional matchups in just a second, but first, we're less than a week removed from the end of the Big Ten baseball tournament. After what was a crazy week in Omaha, some very late night, early morning finishes, what's your biggest takeaway from that event? Yeah, so I'm going to give you a couple of takeaways from that event, if, if you don't mind, but... I mean, I think you saw some really good baseball. There's good baseball in the Big Ten. We saw good pitching, some timely hitting. Uh, like you just mentioned, I mean, we saw some late nights and, and guys that had to, to grind and battle through some performances. So I, I was impressed uh, with, with the level of baseball in the Big Ten Conference. And, and then part two to that, um, I tell you what, I feel bad for Rutgers. To me, Rutgers got absolutely hosed by not getting into a regional, uh, finishing – second in the Big Ten regular season, finishing second in the conference tournament, uh, 45 wins. I think their RPI was number 42 or something to finish up. So uh, to me, Rutgers was absolutely deserving of, of being in a regional. And it, and it feels almost like the committee 
they, they had their mind going in that there was only going to be two Big Ten teams getting into a regional. And, and I almost feel like if, if Maryland would have won the conference tournament, then Rutgers would have ended up with an at-large bid. Um, with that not happening and Michigan getting one, I, I think they still just gave the Big Ten conference two. But Rutgers, like, Rutgers had a heck of a season, and that is a really good baseball team that got left out. Yeah, I agree with you completely. It seems like Michigan did, in fact, steal that bid by winning the Big Ten championship game and the auto bid. But credit to the Wolverines, Jeff, for doing exactly that and coming back on both Saturday and Sunday, playing a ton of really good baseball. What do you like the most about Michigan right now? Yeah, and you're exactly right. Michigan played great baseball, and they're absolutely deserving. We were talking about the last final weeks of the, of the regular season in the conference tournament that – this Michigan team is, is a talented team. They're loaded. They probably underachieved and underperformed a little bit in the regular season, but they're coming around and, and, and saying, what do I like most? They're hot, right? And that's the most important thing when you get into regional play. Uh, Michigan's hot right now. They, they swing the bats, and their pitching's starting to come around. So I'll tell you what, they made the run in 2019. Um, we got to the College World Series final. That's going to be tough to match, but it's a good team, and they're playing well at the right time. Jeff, what do you make of their draw? They face a somewhat familiar foe in Louisville, the host of this region, a team that they played during the regular season, lost two out of three. Also have a tough first-round game on Friday night against Oregon. Yeah, and, you know, all of your games this time of year are going to be tough. you got to play well. you got to play clean baseball. But I don't, I don't mind their matchup. To me, the thing I think you fear the most when you get into a regional is, is probably an ace pitcher or someone that can just lock you down. And I don't feel like Oregon necessarily has that. So Oregon matches up, and they're a very similar team to Michigan, both very offensive clubs. And, and uh, so if Michigan can, can win that game, and like you said, Louisville's a team that they're, they're familiar with as well. So um, I, it's not an easy region by any means, but it's one that Michigan, I could see them working their way through that region. So I, I, I don't mind the draw for Michigan. Maryland, meanwhile, at home, you know, their coach has called it a program builder. And this for a team that made the tournament, made a run last year, but now they're hosting a regional for the first time ever. So why does Rob Vaughn believe this is a building block for his team? Yeah, it's just a huge opportunity, right? Anytime you're at home playing in front of your home fans, they're going to make some improvements to the park and do some things to uh, to be able to play the region on home. So it's a big opportunity. And if, and if they can take advantage and capitalize on that opportunity. If they can get themselves out of the regional, they're going to have their hands full. I think they're what they're with Stanford um, on their side. If Stanford wins their region and Maryland wins their region, that'd be a heck of a super regional matchup and a tough matchup for Maryland. But um, it, it is, it's just, you, you try to take one step forward and keep moving forward as a program. Maryland is absolutely loaded. It's a really, really good baseball team. Uh, that, that, again, they just keep making steps in the right direction, and, and hosting a region is something that's big, not only for Maryland, but for the entire conference. Um, and, and hopefully American, uh, Maryland can capitalize on their opportunity. And they will try to do so starting Friday night, opener against Long Island at home in College Park. Big Ten Network baseball analyst Jeff Lisey. Jeff, we appreciate the time. Enjoy regional weekend. Absolutely. Have fun, guys. Chris Murray shared some very welcome news with Iowa Hawkeye basketball fans on Wednesday, announcing that he would return to Iowa City for another year with the Hawkeyes. This, of course, after his brother Keegan entered the NBA draft and is expected to be one of the top 10 picks off the board. Plenty of interest in Chris, but instead he'll be back, hoping to make the quantum leap that his brother made a year ago. Yeah, there's definitely interest. Um, throughout this whole process. And um, I just kind of had to weigh both options, but ultimately coming back to Iowa, um, it was, I have no guilty conscience staying in the draft at all. I'm so excited to be back. And um, yeah, I mean, it was definitely a tough decision, probably the biggest one I've made in my life, but I'm happy with the decision I made. There's just a couple things that might change your game fully. And I think that's what I worked on the most was just taking like different feedback from teams and just kind of, trying to make improve my game in that sense. Being able to grow and make the right decision has always been something that I've been able to do in my basketball career so far. And I think I've matured, especially on the mental side of basketball and just kind of learning what it takes to become an NBA player. Um, I think that's the biggest thing I took from this process.